Modern ships are powered by massive engines. How massive? Well, it depends on the ship size, but just to give an idea, here's an example of a medium-sized engine. It has six cylinders with a bore of 60 centimeters and a 2.4 meter stroke. To give you some perspective, this is the spare piston. And this is the spare cylinder liner. For comparison, my height is 5 feet 7 inches. Now to give even more perspective, let's have a look inside the engine's crankcase. In this episode, the engineers will be carrying out the crankweb deflection readings. This is something that is done regularly in order to detect any misalignment of the engine's crankshaft and also main bearing wear. The function of the main bearings is to support the crankshaft and allow its smooth rotation during engine operation. The measurement principle is that curvature of the crankshaft due to height or offset differences between main bearings will cause adjacent crankwebs to deviate from parallel. This measurement is done using a dial gauge. The gauge is fitted between the adjacent webs opposite the crank pin at half of the diameter from the shaft center. The crank web spread is measured at different angular positions while the crankshaft is rotated through a full revolution. Crankshaft deflection readings should only be taken when the ship is afloat, like when at anchor, and during calm weather. Now here's a bit of additional information. For those of you who are familiar with smaller engines, this view of the engine crankcase might be a little different from what you were used to. As you can see, the piston is not directly attached to the connecting rod. Instead, the connecting rod is attached to a crosshead, and bolted right on top of the crosshead is the piston rod. This setup allows for the longer strokes in these type of engines. Anyway, we have taken this instance as another training opportunity for our cadet, so he could experience firsthand how to take the deflection readings inside the engine's crankcase by himself. Of course, before we started this procedure, we have already secured the necessary precautions and preparations like the enclosed space entry permit, locking and tagging the starting mechanisms, and open the indicator cocks, among other things.
Initially, the first engineer gave him the instructions, and as soon as he understood what needs to be done, we began the measurements. The first unit to be measured is the one wherein the piston is near the bottom dead center position. To be more precise, it should be right at the beginning of the compression stroke as illustrated in the drawing. The sequence will then follow the engine's firing order. There are markings where the dial gauge needs to be placed. And as soon as it is in position, the gauge will be set to zero. Once set up, the crankshaft will be turned using the turning gear and the readings will be taken. As mentioned earlier, Measurements will be taken at specified angles. The angles are shown here in this diagram. A positive reading on the dial gauge means that the crank throw is opening, while a negative reading means compression or closing of the crank throw. This procedure is repeated for each unit. <laughs> Once all the units have been measured, the values will be calculated to determine the deflection in each of them. Crank clip deflections are calculated from the vertical and horizontal planes. Simply put, a positive difference would mean the section of the crankshaft was sagging, while a negative difference would mean it is hugging. If the deflection readings exceed the allowable limits, it usually points to a worn out or damaged main bearing. However, the main bearings will normally not be damaged unless there is an underlying reason, such as severe engine vibration or loss of lubrication. Carrying out deflection readings can help in early diagnosis and prevent heavy damage from occurring, including crankcase explosions. After measuring all of the units, a final ocular check was carried out to make sure no loose materials like rags or tools were left inside. Once confirmed that everything was clear, the crankcase doors were secured. Another job by the engine team completed.